Second Chronicles chapter 24. Joash was seven years old when he began to reign. He reigned forty years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name also was Ziba of Beersheba. Alright, so seven years old. You say, well, what kind of king is seven years old? He can reign. And what's the difference between today and America where they think kids have the right such a young age and they got everything, they know everything. Well, the kids in America are not brought up like Joash was brought up. Joash was brought up under uh, Jehoiada, a good priest of God, and for seven years and continue to the end of this chapter, he's under the priest of God, he's under the law, he, he's He's in the he, he lives in the temple. The high from Mathaliah and to what we read last week that uh, he's finally taken over as king, put in position. But listen, he's under the he's not under a Levite. He's under the priests and Levites. He's under God, just like Samuel. This is why he can reign at seven years old and being such like that. Unlike um, Rehoboam. I don't think he'd be so stupid to seek unwise counsel when he had troubles. I think he probably went to the priest, and if you remember correctly, the priest had the breastplate, and he had the Urim and the Thummim, where he didn't get an answer from God. So Joash was brought up by God through the priest to do right. He reigned 40 years in Jerusalem. That's the same reign amount of David, King Saul, and Solomon. 40 years. 40 is testy. So he comes to the age of 47 years old. That's not very old. 47. I got three more years before I hit 47. Not very old. And Joash did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. All the days of Jehoiada the priest. Now get that note. That's a very important footnote that God puts in there. Joash did good as long as God's priest was there. As soon as the priest dies, things go bad. And Jehoiada took for him two wives, and he begat sons and daughters. Why he would do that, I don't know. It seems to be a royalty thing. You know, they want children. And, you know, the Bible says children are a blessing from God. Uh, and just fruitfulness of God. You can have one wife and children. Right, when you got two wives in the house, you got problems. Listen, a husband and wife themselves are two different people are joined together, and there are problems. I mean, you're going to have one wife that's going to get more infection than the other. Listen, even God said, even Paul said, listen, you're going to love one or you're going to love the other. Talk about God. You're going to love Satan or you're going to love God. It's not the kind of thing to get into. And thank God America has the law where you can only have one wife, which may change if they get the sodomites run in control. And it came to pass, and that's just another note that God put in there, after Mentioned after Jehoiada the priest dies. He may have got married to two wives after Jehoiada the priest died. And it came to pass after this that Joash was minded to repair the house of the Lord. Now, this temple gets repaired. It, break, it gets broken down. It gets repaired. It gets broken down. It gets repaired. It gets broken down. Never is it mentioned that this temple, it, it's just fixed because of natural decay. It's not like, you know, they walk around the house, you know, oh, there's a the gutters, they're falling off, or the, the shingles are coming off. You know, I know they didn't have those things, but the normal things. It's always got to be a great expense because the previous father, the king of the nation, you know, he went in there, stole the gold, he ripped the gold off the walls, he closed the place up. It had been closed up all during Athea. And you know she wasn't in, in the temple worshiping, because first of all, Joash was hidden there. She never found out. Second of all, she was against God. She was against doing right. She was of the family of Ahab and, and Jezebel. So you know she wasn't 
This place has been closed up. It, it's it's getting decay. And see, even to show you still, you know what? As wonderful as the temple was made, and, and for the purpose of God that it was, guess what? Everything by man breaks down. Not, not until we get to New Jerusalem are we not going to need plumbers and carpenters. Now, there will be plumbers and carpenters in New Jerusalem, but we don't need them. They're saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Today, a church needs a carpenter. It needs a plumber because somebody, you know, put something down the toilet and flush it and it gets stopped up. You know, uh, you go turn on something and it don't work no more. The, the light bulb will blow out or something. We are under man-made. We are under a curse. We are under sin. For all has come short of glory to God. For all has sinned. There's nothing perfect, and not even in this temple, with the, with the great love that David had, and with the great wisdom that God's given to him, things break down. Evolution is a lie. Because if evolution was true, this illustration was you would go buy a car from a junkyard, and it would get better and better and better as the years grow on. That's what evolution teach. It gets better and better and better. According to evolution, we all should jump out of the casket and just grow up and, and get better. It don't work like that. So things break down. You need to learn that. Just because you're a Christian, just because it's a church, doesn't mean it's going to be maintaining its free. And he gathered together the priests and the Levites. So see, the priests and Levites. All priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests. And said to them, Go out into the cities of Judah and gather of all Israel money to repair the house of your God from year to year. And it's funny how he says your God there. And it's funny how he, he, he's not talking to Jehoiada. He himself is going to the priest and going to the Levite and said, Listen, go out there and collect money. Your God. Year to year. And see that ye hasten the matter, howbeit the Levites hasten not. Well, they're not obeying the king for some reason. They're in rebellion. He, he's the king. He's in charge. I would assume Jehoiada would have, would have vouched for him or you would see him speaking up saying, Hey, Joash, you're wrong. We don't see that. So the priests are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. And the king called for Jehoiada, the chief. Oh, now he gets down to the business. You guys won't listen to me. I'm going to call the head dog. I'm going to call the big dog. And the big dog will start barking. And when the big dog barks, you in trouble. And said unto him, Why hast thou not required the Levites to bring in out of Judah and out of Jerusalem the collection, according to the commandment of Moses, the servant of the Lord, and the congregation of Israel for the tabernacle of witness? All right, listen. I charge them to go collect money. The house needs to be fixed. Things need to be taken care of. The, the law says such and such. Why have you not done it? And this is the reason why the place is out of disarray. For the sons of Athaliah, that wicked woman, had broken up the house of God. All right, she not only shut the place down, she broke it up. Now, where's probably the altar she, she disassembled? The brazen altar, maybe, I mean, and she went in there and took things and took them apart. And probably within time, they probably fell apart without care. And also of the dedicated things of the house of the Lord did they bestow upon Balaam. Now, Balaam, Balaam, Baal is the sun god, the god of all gods. Asterisk is his honey, his wife, the moon. And when Baal and Asherah get together in their little orgies, they have little children called stars or Balaam. Balaam with the I am is Baal plural. Little Baals. They worship the, 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 the zodiac, the sun, the moon, and all the stars. 
So as a liar and her sons go in the house of the Lord, they take everything that's God and they give it to a false God. Well, today you got Baptist churches that got things that were one time dedicated to God and now they turn them over to false gods. And you need somebody like Joash to go in there and clean the place up. And the priests and the Levites didn't do the cleaning. Does that sound familiar? Are we in 2013? There's somebody who has their heart set to, to improve God, God's building, to improve God's worship, to get things right way the way the book of the, well, for them the book of the law says for us to be what the scriptures, what Paul says to do, what Paul told us how to have a church, and you get people in the congregation, they don't do it. Bible's up to date book. That's why people don't read it. And at the king's commandment, they made a chest and set it without at the gate of the house of the Lord. All right. Now this will be back in Second Kings, chapter twelve. He makes a chest. They put a hole in it. And they put it right by the, the front door of the, of the temple. I keep on want to say tabernacle. So they set the collection plate out. And the collection plate came back empty. So they put a box in the back of the church where the doors are, where you come in, and you put your money in the in the box. That's scriptural. We see that in Second Chronicles. You have a box for tithes and offerings. You have a box for missionary. You have a box for other. And you tell people put a note on it. Did you get what I said? When they sent the plate out, nobody did the job like they were supposed to. When they put a box, wait till you see what we're going to read. When you read it, it says they, you know, the money came in abundance. I mean, can you say it's a proven scriptural fact? It said they made a chest and they put a hole in it, and that's what the, at the front door. What more do you want from scripture? And they made a proclamation through Judah and Jerusalem to bring in to the Lord the collection that Moses, the servant of God, laid upon Israel in the wilderness. And they brought gold, silver, precious stones, uh, the linen, everything that was needed that Israel brought in. And all the princes and all the people rejoiced and brought in and cast into the chest until they had made an end. They put money in the chest and they put money in the plates. Sorry. Now it came to pass that at when the time the chest was brought into the king's office by the hand of the Levites. Now get that ass. You never have church money in handle of one person. I don't care if you think that guy is the most faithful person in all the world. Unless he's Jesus Christ, you cannot trust him with the money. I'm sorry, who care he is? You don't know how powerful the devil is. That guy may take the money because he may be dead broke with bills and everything like that. and You don't know. When it comes to church money, always two or more at all times. I've heard churches where they have three in case one has to go to the bathroom. That's proper. That's even looking out. The Bible says in the Old Testament, and in Jesus quote, and Paul quotes, out of the mouth of two or three, it shall be established. You got two or three men over money. If it goes missing or something happens where a mistake happens, you can go back and find that mistake. You got one person in charge of money. Well, I didn't see it. It didn't pass by me. So Levites, more. And when they saw that there was much money, the king, scribe, and the high priest officer, is two more people, came and emptied the chest and took it and carried it to his place again. That carried the, carried the, the trunk back to the front entrance. 
It got full. They emptied it out. They brought it back empty for the people to fill it back up. Thus they did day by day and gathered the money in abundance. Well, this way it is working. And then you don't have to wait for people to write a check during the church service. Or fill in their pockets. Or I've seen some people even try to make change out of the, out of the plate and all that. And then you see what other people give. And you see who doesn't give. And you can get a little prideful with that. I've even seen a story where, you know, a guy puts an offering envelope in the pot. And there was no money in it. It was a blank envelope. Then in um, Jesus, when he was at the temple at the treasury, didn't he say that you know they came in cast in their cast in their abundance? They had the same thing going on here. Now did Jesus rebuke them because they had they had a box at the at the church, or did he rebuke them because they just gave out uh, their abundance? And here comes one woman cast. Cast in, cast in to a mice. The same thing go, was going on when Jesus was in the temple. And the king and Jehoiada gave it to such as did the work of the service of the house of the Lord. Notice how it keeps. It was the Levites came to the thing. Then the king, scribe, and the high priest officer took the money and counted the money. Now it's the king, Joash, and Jehoiada who's going to spend the money. Two, 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 two. Jesus sent his disciples two by two. The missionaries went out two by two. And usually it was more, but I mean, as recorded, Paul and Barnabas and, and Mark and uh, Silas. I got that backwards. But you know what I mean. Everything in the work of the ministry is by two. When Joseph was all by himself, he got in trouble with a woman. And he was completely innocent, the Bible records. You never do anything alone. Well, I ain't got nobody to knock on doors for me. Don't you dare go knock on doors by yourself. You better pray to the Lord. Go put tracks on doors. I mean... You catch that woman, you know, she, she just found out her husband had an affair or something like that. She wants to get even. She'll use you as a as a proxy. Because the woman that did it to Joseph lied. And her words were believed and Joseph was put in the jail how many years for innocency? He said it will never happen. Jesus Christ, what sin did he commit to be put on the cross? Absolutely none. What you're learning in this chapter is when you're dealing with money, when you when you when you go into the New Testament and you look at the life of Jesus, you look at the life of Acts, and you look at Paul, you do things with a partner. Where two or three are gathered together, there I am in the midst of them. So it's a very important issue. You get in a lot of trouble, you disobey scriptures. Gave it to such as did the work of the service of the house of the Lord. And hired masons. Now you run this thing back to, to Solomon's time. Where it says Solomon had made. This is where the masons get. Hey look at us. That's us right there. That's We worked on the temple. Yeah. And it also says a 1972 Cadillac DeVille was. Was the. Was the. It don't say that. Well, it does, does it not say it. This is where the Masons run to say, here we are. A Mason is somebody who works with brick and stone and mortar. They ain't a bunch of idiots that run around with this secret handshake, secret, secret rings, and bury you in, in sheepskin, and you can't read about us because because you know you're gonna find yourself in trouble. And don't blame me because I've been threatened by a mason for reading a book about masonry. He threatened me. 
And he didn't go all the way because he knew I could get him in trouble with the company, I could get him in trouble with the law, I could get him in trouble with the Constitution. But had he had his rights and the Constitution and all that disappear, who knows where my body would have floated up. I was strictly warned not, I had no business to read anything about Mason or right, in their books or anything. It was none of my business. Any books I have from anybody who claims to be a, a Mason or who wasn't a Mason writes about it, they, they're complete liars and they're not to be believed. And listen, I had a guy tell me, with the ring on his finger, and also told me that he was a Christian. Don't tell me. God has let me have a file cabinet of lies and files to deal with people, to deal with situations for the ministry. I've seen it and I've heard it with my two ears. And he even told me, you can find us in the Old Testament. Every time you see Mason, that's us. So, and carpenters... To re that must have been Jesus' day, I guess. You know, Jesus was a carpenter. You couldn't find that in the scriptures either with a flashlight and a microphone. Or with a ma ma microphone, with a magnifying glass. As a matter of fact, he told his mother, I'm about my father's business, and he was at the temple talking with the temple people and teaching them. And Mary said, well, your father and I, no, 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 Mary. I ain't about my father's business here. I ain't no carpenter. You don't read your Bible. You don't study your Bible. You don't know what Jesus said. I do. So Mason the carpenter, that's funny because that's where you get the Masons. That's where you get the people that said Jesus is a carpenter. And here they have a group together. Funny. I didn't realize that for the first one. To repair the house of the Lord. So, what are you told about this? You're told several things in, in a sentence. Uh, I'm trying to say bricks, stones, and martyr work needed to be done. That's severe damage. And carpentry. Carpentry includes all things wood, doors, furniture, anything wood. Now, you can say that, that within time. I mean, if you don't, a door will fall down if you don't take care of it within time. Let a house be set. It's going to fall apart. And also such as raw and iron and brass to mend the house of work. Now, he's got the iron workers here. He's got masons, he's got carpentry, and iron workers on this project. This is a serious, serious job site, hard hat area if they had them. That's how bad the house of the Lord got. And what happens when you get wickedness running around? How bad can the house of God get? Well, I'm telling you. So the workmen wrought and the work was perfected by them. And they set the house of God in his state. Notice how it says his state and strengthen it. So the house is repaired. It's up to snuff. It's back to where it was supposed to be. Get that. Mark that. Know that. Because it's not going to stay like it. Sorry to say. Matter of fact, you were going to Jerusalem right now. And you go over there and say, hey, I want to, I want to take one of those tours of of the holy land, and it's unholy land because a bunch of Catholics and uh, Muslims are running around. It ain't holy, it's unholy. And they'll take you places where Jesus didn't live, where Jesus didn't die, where Jesus wasn't buried. Catholics don't know nothing. If you go over there now and say, I want to see the temple, you go all the way over there, you'll see the dumb of the rock. It's not even there. It was destroyed in 70 A.D. under Titus. Complete destruction. And when they get the temple back in, you're going to need everybody to build it, including the material. 
and it's going to be built again for the Antichrist and for Jesus in the millennium. And when they had finished it, they brought the rest of the money before the king and Jehoiada. Oh, you mean they didn't take cutbacks? They didn't skim off the top? They didn't, they didn't mess with God? There was money left over, and the workers, and the carpenters, and the iron workers, and everybody brought their money back to, guess who? The king and Jehoiada, two people again. Can you imagine your, your typical Christian today in his Baptist church? Oh, give me two hundred dollars, all right? And the job cost fifty bucks. Well, you know, I had to. Yeah, I dealt with those Christians too before. I know a used car salesman that was a Christian, and someone bought the car, and it was a piece of junk. Yeah, I've been through that, seen it, done it. Guy used to carry titles and. And registration papers in his Bible in case somebody needed a car. Yep, done that, seen it. Guys, mess, guys, his entire family is all messed up today. Done it, done it. But these guys were faithful. Whatever was left over, they brought back to the king and they brought back to Jehoiada. They didn't go to the king secretly and say, hey, you know, you cut us in, we'll. Or they didn't go to Jehoiada, you know, if you allow this. We'll... Well, you know, we'll skip. no. They went to the king and they went to the priest and said, "This is how much we did not spend. Here, here it is back." Now, do you think God was pleased with that? Wherefore were made vessels for the house of the Lord, even vessels to minister and to offer withal, and spoons and vessels of gold and silver. And they offered burnt offerings in the house of the Lord continually all the days of Jehoiada. It didn't say Joash, did it? So what's keeping this nation right is Jehoiada. You know what happens? Now I haven't seen this. But I've heard stories. I've seen it in a church split. You become so in love with the preacher. I'll follow that preacher wherever he goes. Whatever that preacher says is right. You know, the church splits, you know, the, the right group gets up. Oh, I'm going to stay here no matter what because I love that preacher. Preacher dies or moves off. They'll move off or they'll die too. Spiritually. They won't go no more. When a preacher fails, falls in sin, they fail and fall in sin. That's tragic. Because you're taking your eyes off the Lord Jesus Christ. You let a man rule you. Listen, even I can fail. I do fail. I'm a sinner. I make mistakes. I'll read the Bible wrong accidentally. I'll do things stupid. I'll say things stupid. If I ever say I'm sinless or I'm perfect, you have a conversation with my wife. She'll tell you I'm not. And give you times and dates, probably. We're just men. We're called of God, yes. We're called to understand the scriptures, yes. But we can fall just like anybody else. We can fail like anybody else. And we're going to die unless the Lord tarries like anybody else. Don't rest your life on us. Whether we fall or die and somebody else comes into the pulpit in that church, so be it. Don't fall either. But Jehoiada waxed old and was full of days when he died. And 130 years old was he when he died. 130? And Joash lived to be 47? Don't you see the potential that Joash had? 130 years. Joash could live, I don't know math offhand, but over 90 years he could live more, I think. I'm not that good with math. And they buried him in the city of David among the kings. 
He wasn't a king, but they buried him with a king. That's how much love the guy had for the Lord. That's how much responsible that guy was. That's how well he was. We're going to bury him with David. We're going to bury him with Solomon and with the kings. We're going to associate him with King David. Because he had done good in Israel, both to God, toward God, and toward his house. Notice it doesn't say the people. If, if he's right, God, if he's right in the, in the temple, when the house means they're doing what the law, he did what the law told him to do. He burnt the morning and he even sacrificed. He, offered, he had the showbread, make sure it was there, he made sure the candles were done like it was. He brought the blood in like he was supposed to. He did what the law told him to do. And following God and following the law as such as he did, the people would be right under him. Now after the death of Jehoiada came the princes of Judah and made all beats to the king. Then the king hearkened unto him. And they started to worship the king. The wrong king. And they left the house of the Lord God their fathers. And serve groves and idols. So you got today in people's house, you got a grove and you got an idol. You got this little bush here and you got Mary sitting there. And that offends God. In scripture, we just read it black and white. They left the house of God to serve groves and idols. So when you go into a Catholic church and you go in that little phone booth, he's surrounded by wood. That's a tree. And you walk up to the idol, you call him Father, and you tell him everything about yourself. For this, their trespass. It's a trespass for groves and idols. Sign says no trespassing. Yet he sent prophets to them to bring them again unto the Lord. And they testified against them, but they would not give ear. God sent prophets. That's what it's saying. God wanted Judah, and he wanted Benjamin. He wanted Jerusalem to do right. He sent prophets. He sent men of God. He sent men who, who were going to preach God's word. He sent street preachers. He sent preachers to them. And the Spirit of God came upon Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada, the priest. Oh, this is Jehoiada's son. The one that they loved. The one that served God. The one that did right. This is the, this is the son of him, which stood above the people and said unto him, he got in a high place and spoke. Thus saith God, Why transgress ye the commandments of the Lord that ye cannot prosper? Because ye have forsaken the Lord, he has also forsaken you. Did you get that? You forsake God, God's going to forsake you. When you go and worship other things besides God, God says, That's it, I'm backing off. When you decide to walk opposite of what God wants you to walk, God stops right there and lets you go. When Pilgrim's on his pathway and he goes off to the castle of despair, God stopped right there. He said, okay, go ahead. You go suffer. I'll be waiting for you right here. And you read that book of Pilgrim's Progress, he ends up right where he left off. I've been there, done that a couple times in my life. I have, I have seen God stop. I keep walking. I walk around a big circle. I get a whole bunch of baggage put more on me. And God is waiting in the same spot. Let's go. Now, now the load is heavier, isn't it? And Christians would get that. If I would get that message. You know that, that 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 thing that the footprints in the sand. That's very that's a very lovable poem. But if your footprints are in the sand of sin, if you're walking where Christ is not going to walk, ain't Christ carrying you?
Christ ain't going to carry you where, you where he doesn't want you to walk. Because if you walk where he doesn't want you to walk, that's called rebellion. Plain and simple. This is what they're doing. They're rebelling against God, and God sends a preacher, a prophet. And they conspired against him and stoned him with stones at the commandment of the king in the court of the house. Joash orders the one who's been helping him for at least seven years as a child, raised him up. Jehoiada puts him as king, gives him the, the, the testimony, protects him, guides him through his life. His son comes in and explains to him, listen, you're doing wrong, you're wicked. And Joash orders Jehoiada's son to be stoned. You get that? The Old Testament said you were to stone a false prophet for preaching to take you away from God. Joash charged this guy sent by God saying that he was not a prophet of God but a false prophet. Now, if he was a false prophet by the charges of Joash, who was Joash worshipping? The false prophets. The true false prophets. Because this was a prophet of God. And he charged him with being a false prophet. Calling evil good and good evil. Now that's not America today. And look where he did it. In the court of the house of the Lord. He's by the brazen altar. He's by the labor. And he orders everyone to kill the man of God. From the temple. Where God said my name will be there always. Is America going to be persecuting the prophets of God? I don't know. But if we follow what we've been reading through Second Chronicles, one of the places, if it does happen, it's going to happen is men of God are going to be killed in the Lord's house. Who did it? The Lord's people. The Jews. Who's going to be the number one Christian enemy? They're supposedly Christians. You got three enemies. You got religion, you got Satan, and you got the brethren. I say that without apology either. Religion, Satan, and other brethren. This is their brethren that killed this guy. Jews killed. Joash was a Jew. He was of Judah. He was of David. He is the line of Jesus Christ. He did just as wicked as King Saul ordering, uh, what's his name? There? I can't think of his name. To kill the priest that helped David. Doag, I believe it was. King Saul ordered Jews to go kill the priest to help David. They said, no, we're not going to do it because it's wrong. Doag said, hey, I'll do it. Okay, go ahead. And he went and did it. Who killed Jesus? His brethren, the Jews. You know what the Bible says is, that, and listen, they're God's people. You know what God says who the enemy of the, of the gospel is? Jews. Plain and simple. They hate this gospel. But you're to pray for them. You're to witness to them. And you're to tell them about Jesus. Thus Joash the king remembered not the kindness which Jehoiada his father 
had done to him, but slew his son, murder. He didn't kill him. Joash did not kill him, but God charged him because he ordered it. Just like David and Uriah. You don't have to, to, to swing a weapon to be a murderer. There's a guy I'm told in Arizona, he's being charged with murder today. I was told that this guy praised the God that he killed President Obama. That's stupid. That, that's really just plain stupid to pray that prayer. But God is charging him with murder. And when he died, the Lord looked upon it and required it. Now, when he died, that's Zechariah. When Zechariah died from this, God says, okay, okay, Cain, you and I are going to have it out. And it came to pass at the end of a year that the host of Assyria came up against him. All right, God's now sending the enemy. came up against him and they came to Judah and Jerusalem and destroyed all the princes of the people from among the people and sent in all the spoil of them unto the king of Damascus the princes are the ones that were, were doing our beats to the king they're the first ones to go all right, I'll take all the spoil bring it back to Damascus isn't that funny kind of word and name that show up Damascus? That's where Paul was going before he got right. So all the spoils on the way to uh, it's on the road to Damascus. <laughs> like Paul was. For the army of the Syrians came with a small company. They didn't bring a lot of people, they came with a small company. A small company, I would about a hundred, two hundred men. Wasn't there one one uh, military leader that brought a hundred men before Elijah sent by the king? I think it was a hundred men. Don't we read when, when they broke these things up? They were, you know, they broke them up into hundreds. Didn't God tell them in the law? Listen, if you break my commandments. You're going to flee, at, at, you know. One will make you flee. And the Lord delivered a very great host into their hand. God is working with the Syrians and not the Jews. Don't think if your life as a Christian, you're living wrong, you're living worldly. That God is going to be on your side. If you got problems in your life, it may be God bringing the rod down upon you. He may be chastising you because you're doing wrong. Maybe. There's other things, you, I mean, wrong and problem. It could be Satan like Job. It could be your own fault. But here, the problems are because they are forsaking God. And God is with the enemy. Why did God allow England to be conquered by the Muslims? Because they gave up on the word of God that we have in our, in our hands today. And slowly America is giving up on the Bible. For junk. They call it a Bible. I call it a skunk because it stinks. Because they have forsaken the Lord God their fathers is why now... The enemy, God, is on their side. And if, the, if America is a Christian foundation, as they claim, our forefathers, this and that, everything like that, if we forsake their ways, guess what God's going to do? According to the Old Scriptures, according to the Old Testament, He's going to bring your enemy and He's going to let the enemy win. So they executed judgment against Joash. 
judgment is the the the, the enemy coming in, killing your princess and taking spoil back. That's a judgment. Death of others is a judgment. And when they were departed from him, for they left him in great diseases. I don't know what that means, disease. I don't know how they left him in diseases. Maybe they brought something when they came in. I don't know. His own servants conspired against him for the blood of the sons of Jehoiada. Those sons? Did you see that ass? You think God made a mistake in the Holy Spirit? You think maybe they were playing Wheel of Fortune and an S and then they got an extra one? That's an S. That wasn't just Zechariah, that was sons. Ooh, a lot has happened. I can say a lot of speculation, but I'm not going to go there. But it wasn't just Zechariah. He turns out like King Saul. He kills a whole family of the prophets. See what happens when you don't read your Bible? You miss little nuggets like sons. The priest. And slew him on his bed. Alright. So God is, be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth that he shall also reap. You killed, a man, you killed one of my men, and many of them. Well, guess what? As Jehoiada helped and served you, one of your servants is going to kill you. And this isn't bad enough. He's going to kill you on his bed, not the battlefield or anything like that. Wasn't one of the Saul's sons, Ishbanish, wasn't they went into him when he was on his bed and took off his head and brought it to David? David was like, wow. You guys are gross. You, you, got, you got the guy where he's sleeping in his bed. You, you, you chopped off his head. Even Saul didn't have enough character to say, hey, David's sick of his, bring me him in his bed. To kill someone in their bed wasn't, wasn't popular. It wasn't a good thing. To die in bed like this, I mean, you hang your head in shame. And he died. And they buried him in the city of David, but they buried him not in the sepulcher of the kings. Now go back to verse 16. Where did they bury Jehoiada? Jehoiada got to be buried with the kings, but the king did not get to be buried with the king because he killed the priest. How do you like that for a reversal? And can you imagine when Jesus died and the temple was rent and the, and the saints... Of waking out of their graves. Uh, where's jo Joab? Where's Joash? He ain't here. I'm here. Thought you were a priest. Yeah, I am a priest. Okay. And these are they that conspired against it. Now look at this. God's even going to record their name. Anybody care to name the midwife that helped Mary deliver Jesus? What was the woman's name at the well that Jesus talked to? What were the names of the daughters of uh, Adam and Eve? But the Holy Spirit is going to record you these names. And these are they that conspired against him. Zabad, the son of Shemaliah, and Ammonitus. Ammonitus, that's of Lot. When his daughter slept with him in a cave. Incense. And it says Ammonitus. 
It was a woman that killed him upon his bed. It, that's even more of a shame. No, say that the son of that's the next one. Is that one? The son of Shemite and Ammonites. So Shemite must be then the mother. All right, Shemite must be the mother. But still, it's an Ammon. Right? That's a lot. That's not bad enough. Ready? And Zeholiabad. You know that they both get the name Bad in their name. It's a bad thing. The son of Shemareth, a Monobitus. That's the other son of Lot. Now concerning the sons and the greatness of the burdens laid upon him and repairing the house of God, behold, they are written in the story of the book of the kings. Kings proper. And Am Amaziah his son reigned in his stead. And that just closes his life. He was killed by his servants. After killing the sons, plural, of Jehoiada, that's it. And he's in hell today for murder. In the Old Testament, you could not go and bring an offering for murder or, or adultery. Those are the two sins that there was no sacrifice. He said, well, David, the sure mercies of God. Aren't you glad you're not in the Old Testament? This guy started off right and died and went to hell.